28 years ago, the first Rotary Club was started in Chicago by a lawyer who, though born in the Middle West, was brought up in New England. It was his idea to have a group of men of every line of business and profession who should, in the spirit of the Golden Rule, practice friendship and cooperation. From that club has grown the world movement of Rotary. That Chicago lawyer, who still lives in Chicago, is here tonight, and it is now my privilege and honor to present him to you. I introduce to you all Paul P. Harris. Friends of the air, it is a real privilege to address you. We are gathered together in Boston from almost every civilized country of the world. We come from the British Isles, China, Japan, European and South American countries, Australia, New Zealand, and many others. More than 40 nations are represented, and some of the delegates will have circled the globe on their return to their native country. It is a most inspiring occasion. In the presence of this gathering, my mind very naturally reverts to the first meeting which was held in Chicago 28 years ago. Four of us were in attendance. Mighty oaks from little acorns grow. Perhaps there are two features of Rotary which more than any other challenge the attention of those who are not Rotarians. One is what we call our classification plan by virtue of which membership in Rotary is limited to one representative of each line of trade or profession. The other is the provision that neither racial, political, nor religious standards shall constitute barriers to membership. Through these two provisions, Rotary is thrown open to representatives of all walks of life, to representatives of all countries and all forms of religion. To put it briefly, Rotary is trying to make the words of Robert Burns come true. You'll remember that. The time will come for all that, when man to man shall brother be for all that. On January 29, 1940, we celebrated our silver anniversary, 25 years of service to Asheville. Paul P. Harris, founder of Rotary International, gave the main address. Paul spent three days in Asheville area as a guest of our club. That's what he wanted to do in Asheville. Paul said he would like to visit informally with smaller clubs, see some mountain laurel, and the Billboard State. Despite six inches of snow on the ground, he was driven to Hendersonville and trying to visit the clubs. He said that trying reminded him of his Vermont Hills. Buzz Tennant was the current president of Rotary and then in Hendersonville. Buzz went on to become Rotary International President in 1957. At the anniversary dinner, Buzz Tennant presided. George E. Lee, the first president of Asheville Rotary, gave a brief history of the club. Paul Harris was introduced by Robert Phillips, 20th president of the club. Robert told about Paul showing him the room where Rotary was started when he visited Chicago. Robert said that Rotary kindled a great appreciation and fellowship and makes for a better life in dark places of the world. Paul started speaking and said that a picture of the building where Rotary started would be in the next Rotary magazine. Paul spoke about the beginning of Rotary and said that Rotary in the beginning is like it is today. Members should not think about what they will get out of Rotary because they will have a tendency to drop out. Rotary is not kindled with hatred. Man from the beginning search for happiness. Many young people confuse excitement for happiness. A Salvation Army person said that the spirit of Rotary was the best in the world. Paul said the war in Europe cannot be stopped. However, Rotary is the way for peace in the world. Sooner shall these mountains crumble into dust and break the peace sworn at the feet of Christ the Redeemer. This is a quote from the Christ of the Andes statute in the Andes Mountains, Bettina and Chile. Paul used this quote when he talked about war. Buzz Tennant thanked Paul for the inspirational words and the meeting was adjourned with the club singing Old Ang Syne. Seven years after his visit to Asheville, Paul Harris died on January 27, 1947. He left a legacy of more than 6,000 clubs. In 1947, there were 24,000 clubs a day in 165 countries. 
He was buried in Chicago and a Rotary International Garden was established at his gravesite.